Crying Like a Bitch, Godsmack from the Oracle of 2010. Slin in the Biscuit, episode 17. We got a great guest this week, like we do every week. Yes, an amazing album. Uh, last week's podcast, Eddie Lack, a couple people felt like we gypped them, that they got you know shortchanged a little bit because usually we roll about you know 55 minutes to an hour and change. We only did 45 minutes, so a couple messages, messages right out of the gate. Trav, feeling ripped off. What's going on? A uh, couple housekeeping notes, as always. I get a lot of messages from time to time, people asking for updates on Pat. We talked about this the other day over FaceTime. People will legitimately message me because Pat really doesn't share much online. It's like, what's going on with Pat? You know, How's Pat doing? What's Pat up to recently? Right? These people will even message me on my personal Facebook where I haven't made a post in my life. It just I just have it for like messaging my dad because my dad can't figure out text. And they'll be like, Trav, what's going on with Pat? Do you have any update? No, Pat will give you the update. So there's a lot of uh, seekers out there, Pat, a lot of, a lot of yeah. hardcore fans. If they're if they're so curious about me, just listen to the friggin' podcast, you know, or follow the vlog. Yeah, we're that. But no, everyone's like curious where I'm playing. They're all like, "Oh, where are you playing?" I'm just like, "Shut the fuck up." That's what I want to say. But I'm but then I get I'm like, you know, they just care. You know, they care. I can't be mad at them for caring. It's a good problem to have. No, mm-hmm. that is true. People care and they're invested. Also, another housekeeping note. Gabe Cameron, guys messaging me a lot. Guy's got a bush. He's got to get it taken care of. We'll get into that later for today's video sponsor. <laughs> he wants to know what the best trip you ever heard is. Ooh. Do you have one in the top of your head? I don't. I really don't think there is one specific trip. Like There isn't like a be-all, end-all, like a one-size-fits-all. I think it's it's a trip that, that gets you thinking. Because, you know, the name of the game isn't to, you know, hurt somebody's feelings. Like, oh, you know, like I slept with your mom last night. Like, that's, that doesn't do the trick. You got to go, you know, infiltrate the mind, plant the seed, get out, problem-free, worry-free. And if you can do that, I think you got a great chirp. So whatever you think will do the job for you is the greatest chirp of all time. You just want to bother the other person. Get them really rattled. You know? Yeah. The, the I forget who said it. Was it Doughty? I like Drew Doughty's one where he told the guy he sucks at hockey. That was funny. Uh, Sean Thornton's, I always remember when he says, to the guys, like, I'll let you pick the hand I beat the fuck out of you with. I thought that was clever. <laughs> Those are the two that pop into my head. To our guest for the week, do you have a uh, top chirp? Uh, I was going to say the Dowdy one, to be honest. Uh, like, off the top of my head, I think it's just so funny when guys are, like, so, like, riled up. And you're just like, buddy, you suck. And they're just, like, so lost in themselves. They just don't, like, know what to do. Well, I think the sincerity of it as well is, like, Dude, like you, you suck. Like you're not very good. Like I don't, I don't know why you're out here or who let you out here or why you're even under contract. But like you're terrible. You don't belong here. Yeah, they're staring down at their hands. Like what? What do I do? What do I say now? You, there's you nothing know? you can say about it. Like, no, I don't suck. I'm, I'm good. I guess. <laughs> there was a uh, one I saw on the that everything college hockey account. There was a girl on their podcast, and she got chirped. She's like, someone told another girl. That she had bad eyebrows. <laughs> and, it, and she's like, oh shit. And it got in her head because she's like, oh my god, I just got them done. <laughs> that, that actually just got me thinking. There was, there, there was one chirp I, I used a couple years ago back in the, uh, the Mike Dub Jr. hockey blog days. There's there this one guy. You, you know like uh, what, what like some fish look like but they have both eyes on the same side of their head? And so I told the guy, I was like, buddy, like if your eyes were any closer together, you'd be cousins. Like you look like a turbot, like one of those like, uh, you know, fish and chip fish. And, and the guy, I think I put him in a mental pretzel. He had no idea what to do after that because he's going back to the bench thinking, my eyes aren't that close together. Like I'm beautiful. <laughs> you know, my mom, my mom tells me I look good, right? What are you supposed to do? That's just a, you know, you took a shot at his physical appearance. It's a tough one because now he's questioning how he looks. But it's got to be a rare one. You know, it's got to be somebody he doesn't hear very often. Like, for me personally, I got that you have the biggest nose I've ever seen. I've been hearing that since I was 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just, you know, you have a small dick and you got a big nose. I'm used to it. This is not news. <laughs> when I uh, went and played in Ottawa after I left uh, Lake State, I used to get a lot of creative ones just right off the bat. Because, like, I hadn't played a game in a year and a half, two years. So, guys would just think of whatever. Like, it was pretty bad. Like, first save I made, like, nice, easy bread basket right to my chest, guys. Like, Nice first save you made in two years, and came and gave me knocks. And I was just like, "Oh God, bad news!" <laughs> like, damn it, he's right. Shit. <laughs> well, without further ado, our guest for this week—he's a fellow YouTube goaltender, part of the community, as all three of us are. He's a bar stool athlete. He's not a cameo. We'll get into that in a second. Welcome to the Sling and the Biscuit programming, Cooper Lakenda, ladies and gentlemen. Like my announcer voice. 
Yeah, I like that. Thanks for having me, guys. Snaps, snaps. Fireworks in the background. <laughs> Bang. Wow. Yo, uh, Trev, when uh, I don't want to like brag or anything, but you know, when when uh, Coop, Cooper was starting his YouTube career, did he reach out to you for advice? I don't know. This is also not trying to brag here. I'm at the point where I'm getting buried with like, you know, 100 oh. plus messages a day. Oh, so you're just too cool. You don't care enough for the little guy. Oh, I see. here's the thing. Here's here's the thing. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow the roll here, okay? Right, big <laughs> shot. I get those 100 messages and change every single day. But once a day, I'll go through all my unread messages and I'll try to just burn through them. I'm not giving people like two paragraph answers, but like I'm trying to burn through them because people got questions and, you know, it's funny enough. So, you know, my woman and I spend a good amount of time together and I always tell her when I'm burning through my messages, I says, hey, honey, stay tuned. Stupid message of the day coming right up and the dumbest message of the day, I'll tell her about it. And, you know, so somebody was asking, like, how do you lace up your pants? That is the that is the crown winner. So, you know what? He probably did. Probably did message you for advice, and you just fucking ignored it. Yup. Let's go right to the source. Did you ask, Coop? I'll tell you what. One of my teammates from uh, high school was playing with Pat uh, at the time, and honest, no lie, Pat helped me post my first video ever because I just could not figure it out for the life of me when I was trying to export it. It just like would not work. So I just messaged this guy. I was like, "Please help me." I'm like freaking out. Like my first video, I'm like, "It's got to be on time." I'm like. Dude, no one cares. It was like the first video <laughs> ever. Like, buddy, like, relax, like, take a chill pill. But no, yeah, Pat actually helped me my first ever video. So that's right. Shout out to Lindelow, eh? <laughs> Eddie Lindelow. As we move on, speaking of scumbags, uh, myself included, cameo, cameo. This really pisses me off because here's the deal. There's a lot of Guys going on cameo, whether you're whether you're a YouTuber, you're an Instagram fit chick, you're an NHL player, you're a pro playing over Europe in the Swedish Elite League or something. When you're charging people fifty dollars for a birthday wish, like listen, Pat, okay, you want me to tell you happy birthday? Fifty bucks or you walk. Eighty five bucks or you walk. Like what is wrong with these people? Like you're making money through your Instagram ads, you're making money through you know your NHL deal, you know your Swedish Elite League deal, whatever. Do you need 50 bucks? Like, do you, like, listen, yeah, I'm, right. as we've, we've talked about, if you're not listening, if you're listening to the podcast, you're not watching the video format, look, I don't even have a couch behind me. I have a yoga mat at the corner because I'm poor. Yeah. I'm living off ramen noodles over here. Am I on Cameo? No, because I'm hustling every day trying to make a couple bucks, honest bucks here, not scamming people on Cameo. You're a dirtbag if you're on Cameo. You know, I was thinking it's like for the little guy, like, say, like, me even cameo would be sick but like that you're not even allowed on cameo until you're at like x amount of like followers across the board i don't know if i'm even eligible actually but i didn't know you had to be eligible i thought you could just join no they i think they have to invite you like they have to you have to apply and they have to uh pass it i so there's something with it but you have to have like a you have to be at a like certain status so as for a guy who's already big and making money, why are they doing it? You know, like what's their point? That it's kind of weird. It's like if you're, it seems like an ego thing. Yeah, I guess it's like it's their way of engaging with fans. But I don't know. Is it because it's strictly just a shout out? It's nothing more than just a shout out. You're not engaging. You're not like getting exclusive content. It's simply just like you're charging a fan for a shout out when you're already like making a shit ton of money. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I think even Pat, like to the small person point, like for me, like even if I was able to be on cameo, I have time to message people back on Instagram. Right. Right. I'm that busy. Like I can figure it out. And like even Trav, you said like you have time once a day to go through and message people back. It's not that big of a deal in cameos defense. Like, I guess like some people that are just like super fans of people that they just never be able to get in contact with, like that'd be kind of cool. But it's like, how much do you need that money, right? Yeah, I guess it, it's like celebrity status. So they're like, oh, this is the only way I'll ever get a shout out from this celebrity. And, and, and this is how I've built my foundation on, on you know, within the goalie community and whatnot. And whether people like me or hate me is what it is. But I want, yeah, I know, Coop, if you're not watching the video format, Cooper, yeah, he's smiling, he's cracking a laugh. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. 
it should be personal, right? So for example, the definition of an influencer is somebody who influences your purchasing decision, your life decisions, or whatever. My mom telling me, buy Heinz ketchup. My mom influenced the decision. If I'm influencing your life or influencing you in some way, shape, or form, it should be personal. It shouldn't be paid, right? So if for me personally, if you watch you know, my YouTube vlogs, you watch my how-to videos, my reviews, you listen to podcasts, you follow me on Instagram, whatever, you have emotionally bought in and invested to what I'm all about, and that that alone for me is, is my payment that you care. So if you you know if you want a birthday shout out, you want to you know with something like that, you, you don't need to pay for that. You've already paid me with your time, as opposed to you know what I need fifty bucks for a you know cameo shout out. I need one hundred and fifty bucks for a podcast appearance. I'll tell you this: there's a guy who's been on our podcast charging children a hundred and fifty dollars US a pop to be in a podcast. He comes on right before our podcast starts and he says, you know what, boys. I always charge for my podcast appearances, but I'll do it for free for you. You know what? My dad doesn't want me to swear. Fuck you. Not to my dad, to the guy that wanted to charge 150 bucks to children. I got these kids messaging me. Why is he charging 150 bucks? How do I get him on my podcast? How do I communicate with him? You can't. Guy's ego is the size. That, it's incredible. That, like That's it, a little. It fires me up. I, I don't know how it works in the podcast world with like the big dogs if they pay them x amount to come on as a guest i don't i don't think they do i but so i say like um i don't know what's like a big uh, podcast like rogan like i don't think rogan's paying his guests to come on no like you're paying him a clout yeah right right he's giving them uh attention and a platform for someone like i would never even think to like because i get like i'm sure you too travel or maybe even cooper too like you get these like random high school kids that are like oh i just started a podcast fucking blah 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 and they, they get like six listeners and you're like yeah yeah i'll hop on i'll help you out i'll do an interview whatever like i've done it a few times i've never thought to be like yeah you have to you gotta pay me though even though i know you're a high school kid and you probably don't have a job you know you're just struggling to get by you have to pay me 200 dollars for me to come on your podcast that's i've never even thought to to do that i think that's a little scummy i just feel so inappropriate asking a little kid that's like right on his podcast I, uh, taking advantage you know from semi-pro when he when he's like i want you to go into your mama's bedroom tonight reach into her purse and pull out about 50 bucks right and bring it down to the game that's the real life version of that there there's no bear fight at the intermission it's just a podcast appearance and 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 here's the thing too and, and i haven't told coop this pat, pat knows what i'm talking about this guy's an absolute nobody this isn't like we're hitting up carrie price and you know, we're hitting up matt murray hey you want to go on the podcast 150 bucks yeah sure i'll pay carrie price 150 to come on i'm not paying an absolute nobody scrub to come on the podcast to shell out for his brand and tell us nothing because he's an nhl player who isn't going to say anything nhl guys don't say anything like, i you know what fuck it let's move on i'm i'm fired up enough we're gonna keep the train rolling here next topic Barstool athletes, Pat, take us away before I get myself into an absolute jammer here. Sure, yeah. I uh, when I first saw the Barstool athlete thing, I was like, "Oh, this is really cool," because I thought it was very selective. I know Portner was like, "Yeah, anyone joins," but I figured like, "Okay, he's gonna take like um, I don't know, either like the really good athlete that has a status because of how good they are, say the equivalent to like the Johnny Manziel. Well, obviously, he's like the most popular athlete, but like you know, big guys like that, uh, a YouTube guy like like uh has a following online he would take and blah 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 so i'm like oh this is this is really cool actually i would love to be in that like too bad i'm not a college athlete anymore like whatever you know um then all of a sudden like the fucking track and field team at u mains all these girls are like oh i'm so proud to announce i'm a barstool athlete i'm like what the fuck is going on here and all of a sudden boom everyone's a barstool athlete here and there so i actually made a joke about it in a video I did because I thought it was pretty funny. It's like, yeah, that's, you don't really have to do much and you don't get anything from it. You don't get paid. You might get merch. You might. Have, Cooper, have you gotten merch? I have not gotten merch. Look, yeah. I, I completely, like you're, you're completely right. That, and I saw that sketch or sketch, obviously it was pretty funny, but like the way I look at it doesn't hurt a little bit of clout and hey, like you may get merch, right? Like, you know how yeah. many, Instagram followers I gained from just like being posted on that website. A bunch of like kids. How just you gain? Probably like 150 just from like one post of 50 posts in a day. Like I was like one of 50 
And sure. Just, I know they they buried through like a good hundred posts yeah. that day, and and I saw you repost it. I had to scroll down. I'm like, how many posts are they making? I'm like, I wonder if he's actually getting traction off this. Yeah, and I was just like ripping through it. Like I've made a video about it. I'm just doing everything. Just well, yeah. You can now market that too. It's cool. It, it like there's benefits for sure, but I think there is a confusion that first as like, oh, I'm gonna be paid, but it's like if as a college athlete don't i don't know if you have an actual like i, I for the the guy who's just a track and field guy he doesn't have a platform not no offense to track and field is just not a very popular sport but say like they don't have a but if you're a youtuber athlete or an athlete who has a following for being good you have fifteen thousand followers or something don't don't just hop on and be a like uh with a company for no money like you're actually worth something and i think that's where it's like people are just gonna be careful not just like hopping on for nothing don't let them you take know, advantage of you so pat and i've been talking a lot about this since we started you know pat so could pat having on his podcast around christmas time i said hey i want to make a podcast let's do something we made a podcast happen and him and i've been talking a lot of business you know since then i'm all due respect to pat i'm a little bit more experienced in the relationship side with companies all the marketing all that kind of stuff and the amount of companies out there that will literally take you for a ride, give you no money, be like, you know what? I got these socks made in you know, Nigeria. Guess what? I'll give you a 2% kickback for everyone you sell. You do five ads, you don't sell one. They don't pay you. They just got free advertising. And now you just water down your brand. Like that, That's what drives me nuts a lot about this barstool thing is that guys like you, you're not getting paid. They promise you a little bit of merch. Yeah, you got a little bit of clout. So it's a little bit different. But that there's a value to what you do. You know what I mean? Like you have 3,000, is it almost 4,000 or is it 3,000? Yeah, three and a half, yeah, just over. So you got you got three and a half thousand subscribers and change that value what you say and what you do. They give a shit, they care. You post a video, they're clicking on it, right? They're not clicking on my videos, they're clicking on your videos because they care about your videos. And when these companies come around and they want to you know, bulldoze you over, say, oh, you know what? We're helping you, we're really doing you a favor. No, 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 that's not how it works. You give something to get something in business, right? I'm giving you exposure for these ads. You give me some money. And it, just like Pat mentioned, the amount of athletes that are being taken for a ride right now, I personally feel like by Barstool, by like you're not getting paid. Yeah, it'd be nice to get some merch. But I, I just... It's not just it, Barstool it, though. It's like... It's, that's one small example. It's one small example. Yeah, this is actually something I was going to like ask you guys about after, but I think it's probably good for you guys to talk about now. It's like... I have no idea the business side of things of this, right? And like coming, I mean, I'm probably not the only athlete obviously in this thing and I don't have a manager, like I don't have money to pay anybody. So I'm getting like these emails every day and I'm like, I have no idea whether this is like a good deal or if this is like shit for me, right? And that's like the stuff that it's so like curious for me. If you're looking for a manager, I will happily broker a deal at 25% commission, my friend. Business 101. <laughs> I'm a businessman first and a friend second. You know, there it is. This is something that, and Pat, correct me if I'm wrong, this is something that we've talked about a lot, is, is the value you bring to the table. People see it as, you know, for, for example, Manscaped, our sponsor for today, which we'll get into in a second. They're honest to God, the greatest company in the world to work for. And I'm not just saying it because they're sponsoring the podcast now and I'm wearing the shirt. I've been personally working with Manscaped for over a year, and they, they give me a creative freedom to, you know, do what I want, say what I want, and be, be natural, right? Because that is the ultimate organic ad rating. That same guy doing the cameo stuff did a Manscaped ad recently, and I'm not kidding you. I, sorry, I listened to the ad because people are sending me the, you know, this link. They're like, oh, he's doing Manscaped. And I'm like, hold on. This is the marketing sheet they, they give us every month for like, this is the points you gotta hit. He's literally reading off the sheet, you know, stat for stat. That's not how you sell. You sell by being personable and people buying into what you do. So for me, I got 70,000 subscribers on YouTube, so 70,000 people value what I have to say and, and what I'm doing. It, whether it's true or not, open to interpretations, but we'll just pretend that it is. And when I upload a video, no, I, in all seriousness, they care for some way or shape or form about what I'm doing. I know Pat's laughing, but whether, whether you're coming to make fun of me, you want to learn something, you want to be entertained, there's a reason why you're probably watching, right? But Manscaped or whoever is paying me based off of how many people I take from my audience and can convert them, not off of you know what what I think I'm worth. They pay for what they get in return. So if I can bring, if they're paying me 50 bucks, they want at least 50 bucks in return of sales. So I, I, I don't know what else to say otherwise, other than, I don't even know what the hell I was going with that. <laughs> I would tell you that your Manscaped ads are pretty much the only ads that have actually sent oh, this video, so. Dude, you, you, if I could cut you off for one sec, 
you have got to see when I put the bathrobe on and I do the skits in the hallway and then my neighbors come walking by or like they come out of their apartment from down the hall and they just they open the door and they're like, what is going, there's a man in a bathrobe and he's got no underwear on. He's just got the bathrobe on. Like, you see me from the chest up. I got no gitch on and I'm just sitting there shouting to the camera in the hallway. Like <laughs> that alone could be content for, for the vlog. That's, that's yeah. I, I think I'm new, somewhat new to it. Like companies have recently uh, started like, reaching out doing sponsors i've i've had a couple where i won't name them but there was like a hockey background company that wanted to do like uh they wanted to work together i'm like oh this is cool it's a good company it's got a nice uh following and stuff so i was like oh yeah let's go through this and he's like yep yep so i'm thinking like blah 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 i read something out and i'm like like okay we're gonna do a post he's like all right i'll put x amount in your account for you to do you um you buy for whatever you credit. want huh site credit right it's a site yeah credit, right? yeah yeah buy whatever you want on our site and then you do a giveaway so i'm like wait so you want me to give away what i buy on the site so i get no money and he's like yeah yeah we'll do like we'll do oh we can make it like a fundraiser i'm like all right so you just want to this guy's just trying to get a free ad from me all right so i'm like okay no like i'll do this for three hundred dollars. I'll post the thing on Instagram for three hundred dollars, and then like I'll buy whatever you pay me three hundred, and then I'll do it. So then he goes, "Yep, sounds good." I go, "Okay." Then he goes, "So I'll put one fifty into your site credits, and then pay you the other one fifty. So I just, I just never answered. I was just like, "All right, you're just kind of being a scumbag." The fuck out of here. See, and there's there's a guy right there working for a company. Obviously, he's looking out for the company in his best interest in mind, but that guy's looking to take you for a ride, right? There's there's no value in the relationship of we appreciate what you do, Pat Shea. We want to have you on board and build a relationship, right? This is another thing people don't look at. When you work with a brand for a long time, so for example, like the sideline swap ads, that you know, how long have I been working with the swap for, Pat? Like four or five years, right? There's value in that because you know, Travis in the dirt bag hopping from you know the swap to all these other companies, there's consistency, he believes in it. Manscape, same thing. You know, all these other companies, you work with them for a while, you build value and trust within the audience. And a lot of these companies don't see that. They don't want to build that relationship, I don't think. Yeah, that's also going to be a problem for athletes coming in, just watering down like their market or their brand for sure, just picking everything that comes their way. Yeah. I see the posts on Instagram, like a company is like, oh, if you do this, blah, blah, you'll get free merch. And like, there's a fucking thousands of comments of athletes like, bet, down, set, like, done. How do I get it? How do I get it? Give relax. me some free stuff. Relax. But to Pat, your point, maybe like, maybe for the, like track athletes that like don't have a huge brand maybe that's yeah. like a good thing like maybe it's that's- great it's great for them they're getting free some free merch and whatever it's fantastic for them and it's but for the guy who's has a following you got to be careful not to let companies take advantage of them but like uh like barstool is letting everyone in right now it's in the thing about them it's like, so like for you, yeah, it is, you know, you can label yourself as a bar so athlete. It does help them. But Portnoy is a genius. Like, so what he's doing right now is, okay, now everyone in the world is now, every college athlete is now saying they're a bar so athlete. He's growing. He's, everyone's talking about bar so again. Like he knows, he knows how to do it. Like every, like everyone now is like, oh, I'm a bar so athlete, blah, blah, blah. And so that just grows his brand even more. He's, I mean, he's where he is for a reason, but it's he, he i mean he's good at what he does you can't really knock like you can't knock him for it but there's definitely a lot of you know most people probably won't ever get merch but it's it's just but i mean it's it's from his part it's smart you may not get merch but you know what you can get you can get a fresh shave on with your bush this summer yes. season people are getting waxed people are getting vaxxed people are ready to get down and frisky and when you go to manscaped.com and use the promo code BISCUIT, you get 20% off. You get an awesome lawnmower. This lawnmower, I'm telling you, people, you want to shave your chest, neck, back, ass, balls, whatever you're into, it'll get the job done. You'll be looking fresh. Your woman will like you. And here's another thing that nobody talks about. They got a ball cream, the ball preserver, the wash. You know, you get your junk smelling nice and fresh. Yeah. You get a nice set of gitch. Very comfortable. I'm wearing them right now. Probably the most comfortable gauge that I own on the market. Pat has a shirt that you get with your performance package, with your perfect package. It's fantastic. All the packages. How does that feel on you, Pat? You, you feel fresh? Do you feel ready the to roll? The shirt feels it's as smooth as my balls feel after I shave it with the, with the lawnmower, which is the wow. freshest, smoothest 
shaven balls I've ever had in my life. I, you know, I've always struggled with getting the ball hairs, you know, got like the, the hair down there. I'm like, how do I shave these without, you know, nicking my nuts and getting a little blood? You know what I mean? It's tough. It's a tough game, but no, this is the, the, the razor's just like, it's not too sharp. You know, it doesn't go too hard and you can put the little comb on it. Trims the ball hairs perfectly, like a smooth See, ball in hand. To paint the picture for you here, people, you're probably thinking, you know, you have a razor, you have a buzzer, you take it along your sack, and boom, Johnny's bleeding. Johnny's not going to have a good date tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, might get a little infected too, but here's what Manscaped does. Like when you're shaving your beard, you know, you're trimming your hair, you want a number one, you want a number two, you put that attachment on, you do the number one attachment, and now you can go as fast as you want. If, you know, if you're in a pinch, you set up a last minute date, you're like, oh, damn, you know, I haven't shaved my bush in six months yeah. because I'm Amish. Well, guess what? You're good to go now. You put the number one on, you shave that thing in the shower, you're ready yeah. to roll, and you can, you know, you can hack it, whack it, go really fast because you got your attachment on, you're safe from nicks and cuts. And like they say, you nick your sack. You send it right back. You go to manscaped.com. Use the promo code BIZKIT, B-I-Z-K-I-T. You get 20% off, free shipping, the gift that keeps on giving. Shout out to uh, Gabe Cameron, one of our listeners. This guy told me this week, Trav, I got a bush. I got to get it fixed. This is for you, buddy. We got you covered. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Thanks to manscaped.com, the great folks there, for sponsoring and presenting today's podcast. Beauties. Was that the uh, message of the day? That's the ad read, buddy. Yeah, that Gabe's though, is that the DM of the day? <laughs> yeah, it's the DM of the day, man. He's got a bush and he's got to get it taken care of. We got it covered. <laughs> Gabe's going to be really frisky this summer. He's going to have a hot girl summer, and that's okay. <laughs> hot girl summer. Moving on here. Shall we, uh, you know, I, I want to tread on this very lightly. Pat and I talked about this, but the Trevor Bauer scandal. If you don't know who Trevor Bauer is, he is the pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's their ace, correct? He's their, their go-to guy? You know... I'm not a baseball guy. I think okay, he is, well, though. I think he is. Yeah, because he's a pretty popular name. I do hear the name all the time, so he must be. Yeah, because I remember, he, yep, he was the ace for the Indians. He was the ace for the Reds, and now he's with the Dodgers. The reason I, I found him was because of his YouTube vlogs. He's blown up. He's got a little under a half a million and change for YouTube for his vlogs, and, and he is, does an amazing job. I'm it's the only vlog that I'm watching right now from somebody else where I am hooked and I can't get enough. It's unfortunate what's happened to him recently. Long story short, um, girls accused him of uh, sexual assault and whatnot. We're not going get, to get into that part. What we are going to get into is that uh, at, at this point in time that I'm describing, it's just accusations. He said, she said. And then his management team, I guess his agent or his agency that he works with, comes out and they, they post screenshots of the conversation that he's had with, with this, this female. And I'm reading these screenshots and I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like, you, you had a, a he said, she said, yes, no kind of thing to now you have just given the whole world evidence as to what has gone on. Like, like what is going on through the mind of this agency? You know, if I was Trevor Bauer, I'm sitting at home at this point, I'm getting accused of things that, that have no evidence. And now my agency literally just threw me under the bus and gave evidence to the world. I'd be so chapped. And, you know, what I found interesting, too, was. The Dodgers said, you know, we're not suspending him. He's our ace. He's our money guy. We're paying him a lot of money. Why would you suspend him? But the, you know, the MLB said, you know what, we're sending him home. The guy's got to go home. And uh, it, it's just a shame. Like such a talented athlete, an amazing vlog. I'm, I'm hooked more so on the vlog side of things. But uh, his agency throwing him on the bus, what a shame. Yeah, it's, that's interesting. I, I can't speak. I don't, you know, I don't know the situation, what was – what is true, it's not true, but if it's like, and I also didn't read the screenshots where, like, where the message is kind of bad. Yeah, so so basically in a nutshell, you know, she's accusing him of, of beating her up while, while they're, you know, getting it on, and the screenshots read something along the line, like, th there's pictures now of, like, what her face looked like, and that, you know, he was choking her out with, with you know, her ponytail, and, and he was getting pretty hard and heavy on her, and then he's texting her after, like, I'm so sorry that I did this. Like, he seems generally apologetic for, you know, what he did. Maybe, you know, he took a little bit too far. You know, things happen. And he's like, you know, I'll, if you need anything, I'll get you groceries. You know, you, you need anything. You need jewelry, anything. I, I got it taken care of. Like, it seemed, at least to me, reading through the screenshots, it seemed like a, there, there's nothing money can't buy. I have money. It's, it's not an object or it's just an object at this point in time. And I, I can buy you off. That, that's what it kind of came across as. And maybe he was just being genuine, trying to be like, listen, like, I'm sorry. You know, if you need groceries, I'll get it for you. I'll, I'll help you out. I'm really sorry for what I did. But... Uh, just, just the the light that his agency painted him, I think, really took a spin for the worst. And and also, it doesn't help when 
He's turned off all the comments on all of his YouTube videos and all the Instagram posts. So it, it, it makes you wonder. Like, I know he's probably taking an absolute beating online for this, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, because I mean, those messages are going to be used in the case regardless. Like, the girl has them, you know? So it's like them putting them out to the public is kind of like a fuck you to their own client in a way. It's like, yeah, this is here is everyone. Just so you know, we think this guy's a scumbag, even though you know they were like they were already figuring out. They already saw the messages in private. They just wanted to let the world know. Like the those probably never would have got out unless they. Didn't well, I think do they it. were trying to defend his innocence, and then uh, although what seemed like maybe a good idea at the time, like hey, look, here's some evidence our client's innocent. Well, you, that really backfired. Now you have a guy who's making a lot of money. I believe he's on pay though. He's sent home with pay. Um, but not, not like he needs the money anyway. When you're making a hundred sheets a year, God, I take a pay cut for that. But uh, it's, it's a shame, man. I really keep you get an opinion on that before we move on. I just I was gonna add the pack because obviously he doesn't know very much, but um, I think they were trying because like one of the text messages was like her saying like, "Oh yeah, like I want to do it again," but then she was oh. like claiming like the second time around like she didn't agree to it basically. So things got like pretty oh. like interesting. Okay. So they're like trying to paint him in a good light, but it just came out like looking. Came out bad. Just because yep. the things he was saying and the things he did, obviously, that they both admitted were true, were like pretty Yeah, early. you confirmed it. You confirmed that, that what you did was true. And although, I, I, I don't know. So they they were essentially having some, some rough sex. Very rough. Very rough. Lay in the boots. The boots good and boogie. Well, speaking of taking beating, let's uh, change subjects here a little more positive. I have an idea, okay? So, there's a big fad right now in the Jim Bro YouTuber community. A lot of guys are doing like 24-hour McDonald's challenge, 24-hour Burger King challenge, and it, and it got me thinking, okay? Uh, I was recently in Toronto, Montreal, Hamilton, doing a little, little trip, a little training out there. And, it, you know, I'm going to bed one night, and I was thinking, I was like, you know what? What if, what if I did something like Super Size Me, you know, where he buries McDonald's for 30 days straight? And I was starting to like refine a couple of ideas and I got an idea. During the season this year in Sweden, what I want to do, I want to do a full week of just really clean eating, document you know, how I'm feeling, body weight, you know, performance and practices and games. The following week, I want to do a seven day McDonald's only diet, where, but I'm not doing three meals a day. I'm doing to a certain calorie threshold. So you know, 3,000 calories, you want to do it all in Big Macs, you want to do an apple pie, whatever you want to do. Seven days straight, if McDonald's doesn't sell it, I can't eat it. With the exception of you know black coffee, water, and you know the supplements that I that I take for uh, you know for, for for hockey and whatnot, but I had another idea, a wheel of destiny where like you spin it, like I, like I say I call Pat, Pat gives me like eight menu items in Sweden, and I spin it, and whatever lands on, I have to eat that that day, and then I build my diet around that to my you know calorie threshold of three thousand calories, and it got me thinking. European pro goalie eats McDonald's for a week straight. Here's what happened and do like a daily check on how I'm feeling, how much weight I'm putting on. Obviously, the salt is going to be sticking a lot of water to my body, performance and practice. I, th I think this could be a really viral video. I have one question for you. Yes. How much leniency do you have with your coaches? Is uh, that would be one I feel like that would like might well, put the boundaries. Here's what I was thinking. So I'm not going to mention anything. Like, like, I'm not, obviously, people are going to listen to this and know that I'm doing it, but they're not going to know when, right? So I'm going to interview coach and maybe a couple players on our team, guys that sit around me in the locker room. I want to interview them. Be like, okay, I want you to you know, pay attention to me in practice this week and tell me if you notice anything different. And then next week, if you notice anything different, do you, am I getting better? Am I getting worse? Has anything changed? I'm not going to bring my McDonald's around the rink, but I want to see if, if they actually notice something. Because... The you know goals against save percentage that I count in practice through you know watching the video footage back count stats that'll tell one tale how I'm feeling physically obviously bearing egg McMuffins and you know cheese tots ain't gonna be good but uh, all that combined with and I'm not drinking diet coke during games games will be water supplements and stuff zero calorie supplements but during the day it's the three thousand calorie threshold of whatever I want I think that could be a really interesting idea tell them you're going vegan. But so do it be like, yeah, I'm going vegan next week. I want to see how my performance is, how I feel, blah, blah, blah. Let me know if you notice anything different. Film it all and then post it after. And turns out vegan was just McDonald's, Big Macs. They actually, they don't, I don't believe they have a Big Mac in Sweden for McDonald's. Ooh. They had the vegan, 
They had the vegan McTasty. They got the big tasty, the big cheese, Shit. the El Maco, cheese tater know. tots, chili cheese tots. Oh, they got some good stuff. I'd be stuff curious over there. of that though, like how you would feel, because I mean, you eat McDonald's once every couple weeks or whatever. It's not like you know, it doesn't affect how you feel. I mean, it's great for hangovers. If you feel if you feel like uh, shitty after eating it, maybe like for like I don't know. And a half hour, hour, if like you maybe you eat too much McDonald's. I'd be curious if you start feeling like shit or not, if you start eating it like three days in a row, all you eat. Well, well, here's what I'm thinking. So, like, I don't, I eat McDonald's maybe like once every two months. Like, you know, I'm, I'm it's like a, I'm pinched for time. You know, I need some food. You know, I'll bury, you know, two junior chickens kind of deal, like a very rare occasion. I also, I don't drink. I don't know if we talked about this. I haven't had a drink in a little under four years. So there is no desire to have food from a hangover. It's just straight, this is what I'm eating. I think the Egg McMuffin might be my saving grace because realistically speaking, hot take here, I think the Egg McMuffin with no cheese is the best item you can get fast food wise. Like real egg, you get some somewhat real meat, whether it's horse meat, dog meat, I don't know, but it, it is some form of meat. And you get an Egg McMuffin or an English muffin with you know, a little bit of carbs to start the day. It's not a bad start to the day. I think as you get into the you know, day, you get the cheeseburgers, the fries, the ice cream, the apple pies. And I think a lot of it too will come from, you know, I call it Coop. Coop's like, okay, I got eight menu items for you. They're all apple pie. Well, I'm having apple pie today then. You know, absolute sandbag me. But the three times a day check-in, how am I feeling? Am I feeling tired? How's my sleep? Do I feel exhausted at practice? You know what would be funny? And, and so Jamie Phillips, Former Manitoba Moose goalie, Winnipeg Jets organization. He's a nutritional specialist. We got to get him on the podcast one time, by the way, Pat. But uh, I was talking to him. He was saying, you know what would be fascinating is if somehow I pull a rabbit out of my ass and I had the best week of the season on McDonald's. Like if I put up if I put up two shutouts and I'm feeling like dog shit, well, I got to do a full week on Burger King next or on Subway or Max. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> You'll just be living off fast food for months. <laughs> Yeah. You never know. That's the thing. Honestly, Honestly God, if, even, even if I did put up two goose eggs and just a great week, I'd have to go on like a two week cleanse after that. Like, there's no way, like, with the amount of fries and McDonald's I'm eating, like, my salt intake would be through the roof. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to sacrifice my body and I'm going to do a 20 minute, weekly long, week long vlog documentary on pro European goalie eats McDonald's for a week straight. McDonald's doesn't sell it. I can't eat it. The, uh, and when I was at Maine, I actually, I would be curious to have that nutritionist on and talk about this though, because when I was at Maine, there was this one kid, he would, he didn't really care what he ate. And he's like, my freshman year, he's like, I didn't, uh, I, I hadn't scored a goal until like deep into the season. I was like, fuck me. And like taking it very serious. And he's like, one day I, I was just like, you know what? <clears throat> fuck it. It's a pregame meal. I'm not going to the meal. I'm going to go eat Wendy's instead. And he scored his first goal. And he's like, He's like, I felt great during the game. It's all mental, man. He's like, like you, people are all saying like what you eat, blah, blah, blah. He's like, that's all mental bullshit. He's like, so like one, one day my freshman year, it was uh, actually before the last playoff game. I was just like, yeah, whatever. I'm at the mall just like hanging out. We were down in Providence. I'm like, you know what? I'll eat Popeye's right now. And I ate, I ate Popeye's the night before the game. I didn't feel any different in the game. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, yes, obviously it's not the healthiest thing to put in your body or whatever, but like how much does like, how much does it affect your performance and energy levels? I'd be curious to know. I, I have, what do you like, what do you guys eat pregame? I'm a pasta and chicken guy, but I think it's just like over time, right? Like I think once right. like, you never know, but over time, but like I had a goalie coach back in the day, like he's like, you're way too stressed out. Like you're focusing way too much. Like mm -hmm. you gotta eat this. You gotta do this. He's like night before a game, like have a beer, like relax. Like you're going to be fine. Yeah. Not the end of the world. <laughs> and you do that. And like you post a goose egg and it's like, what the hell have I been doing my whole life? Right? Like it just sends you for a blunder, like a mental blunder. But you know, yeah, you know, another thing is uh, my boy Sweeney, we had him on the podcast. We were in Sweden night before a game. I'm not kidding. You. This guy would go to the vendor, Bury a whole bottle of wine, make himself a five course meal. This guy would be making pasta carbonara, you know, his salad, all this, this is like king food. And just like he'd fill the whole table up and bury it all. And then meanwhile, I'm like, you know what, Sweens? I'm just gonna have a roast chicken tonight. Just pre roasted chicken from the store, eight bucks, hot and ready. But you, I think too, having the McDonald's or the Popeyes every now and then is kind of a nice surprise to the body because you get so much salt. So the water is going to stick to your body a lot. You get the fats, you have the carbs for energy and sugar and the calories. So like your body's probably excited to get it, 
But over the course of seven days, so that's all I'm giving it. That's all you get. I think that's when we're going to, like, especially like towards the end of the week, I feel like we're going to see some very interesting yeah. changes in my body and how I feel. Well, like the salt Maybe actually I, is like yeah. good. Like the sodium before a game is good because you're sweating so much out. So it, there could be something to that. Days one and two will be good, but days yeah. five and six might be a little struggle. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll have to time it so that day two is a game and, you know, we hammer down from there. <laughs> yeah. 40, 40 save goose egg game one. Guy gets yanked five goals in the first period, night two. <laughs> no cramps, though. You'll be good. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. you're I'll be, hydrated. I'll be <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> I am Shea hydrated. I'm Shea <laughs> hydrated. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, that, for me, I actually found the only thing that I, I, I don't eat anymore before a game is pasta. I can like I feel slow and bloated if I eat pasta. Like my energy levels suck, and everyone says like eat pasta, eat pasta. You play not enough games. I feel like to just like test things out. Like, Dude, jun- right? Juniors was the time you you play sixty games a season. You could yeah. do it. like you could try anything out. But now that it's, was like, the shitty thing of college. Yeah, you play super like, shitty games to like try try to like oh wait till next weekend now to fucking try that. If like it's yeah it's really shitty. Over so it took me a good two two or three years even to realize I don't want to eat pasta before the game because I it, you only play you, that's sixty or so games in two years or whatever so it's it's weird. I was on the Swedish meatball diet over there in Sweden, baby. Gravy, lingonberries. Oh, dude, you, you know what I'm gonna have a really hard time doing is staying off the meatballs, staying off the gravy, staying off the cannel boules when I get over there. It's gonna be a two week crack the whip. You can't have meatballs when you wake up in the morning, but I'm like, they're so good. Anyway, we got to, uh, I got to have a couple self-help and uh, self-talk meetings with myself uh, when I get down there to Sweden next month. But uh, moving on, we, uh, what do you boys say we talk a little, uh, little hockey, a little NHL hockey, eh? Let's do it. Let's get, we'll get into the Carey Price Murray thing because I know uh, we'll finish that off on a hot take with Coop. Uh, Kucherov, like, you know, they, they give the, the Vesna to, to the guy in Vegas. I don't know his name, but uh, Vasin number one, number one bullshit. They, they give the guy, the Vesna to somebody else last year. Number one bullshit. Vasin got the cup. Vasin got two cup. Like, guy doesn't even know Mark Andre Fleury's name. I love that. And then on top of that, doesn't even know Connor Hellebuck's name. I'm like, this guy, this guy is, has so you. He must have had so many nose beers before he came out on the stage, oh. too. Dude, he's he he was not speaking good English at all. I don't know if he does normally or not, but he was struggling. There's just no way you stay up that long, though. That's just it's absurd. I love it. It's so funny watching these guys. Uh, I I loved uh, Matthew Joseph's press conference because you know th- we talk about it on the podcast how these NHL guys give you nothing. They they give you you know what? Yeah, you know we weren't good enough tonight. We're trying to work harder. Just like those cliche BS answers that like just make me sick to my stomach because like I want something more. Two minutes after the Cups won, the best interviews of the year happened. Like they, I don't, I don't know if you're watching the CBC broadcast, but Kyle Bacos, because he's interviewing Matthew Joseph, and he comes over and he's like, yeah, what a fucking suit, buddy. We fucking won the Cup, eh? And then he's like, well, we're live. Oh, shit, we're live. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, you know, it was a great team effort. You know, we're really trying hard out there. Just yeah, yeah. Flip the switch. Dude, it's weird. It's, it's like the only time it's acceptable, too, you'll see like hockey players drinking. As if they don't drink, you know? It's like, oh, now it's okay. You know, they won the cup. It's okay now. Like, like dude. My biggest problem with hockey, like, they think that, like, we're just robots, robots. Yeah. When you win the cup and you're allowed to do things. Like, it's just ridiculous. I, I uh, saw something the other day. I can't remember who it was, an interview, but uh, they're talking about Danny Heatley. And they said, like, once a month he would have all the rookies over to his house. I don't know if you guys saw this interview. But they said no. he carry an entire bottle of tequila night before a game with all these rookies just by himself wake up the next morning perkiest guy in the world coming to the rink like that's the stuff that you like love to hear you'll never know though never know you'll never well, know. well danny all-star on twitter will tell you about it <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> on, him, but. 1507 eugene's lake baby <laughs> Yeah, it's too much it's too much of a shitty like business in a way because it's like they're not promoting like we always talk about this how it's just like you know they're not promoting a personality and what's really going on like there's some funny ass dudes in a locker room that you just you you never know like they're very entertaining people could honestly be celebrity status but you'll never know because they don't want you to show it it's it's weird i don't that's why i think it's good like 
there's guys like uh, Matthews and stuff hanging out with Biebs at like UFC fights and even like I don't know. Yeah. Not to yeah. pump your tires like you guys like showing that out there of what like hockey players actually have some kind of personality. Mm. That's good. Well, Pat shows what real hockey players do. I just show what the wannabes doing the fake pros do. <laughs> And it's, it is, I do like seeing when like athletes will show personality, but for hockey, for some reason, it's just, it's less, it only comes in, you'll see bits and pieces like Marshawn to an extent, you'll see his, like with Twitter, he'll tweet some funny shit. I, I would like to see more of it. I, do, do you guys feel like the business side of hockey is kind of cheesy in a way? Like not even necessarily like the league, but even in the, within the team, how it's, it's so like structured and they want to treat you like a puppet. Like you have to be at the rink at seven thirty, And if you're here at seven thirty and 30 seconds, you're not playing tonight. And it's just like, so very, very serious where it's almost like, aren't we doing this? Like, yes, of course we have to take it serious, but aren't we supposed to be having fun? You guys feel like that's kind of a little off. No, I, I don't disagree with that. I just think, it's like, where's the line, I, I guess, yeah. right? Because then you get it. I think, like, sometimes I look at basketball players, like, show up late or they have, like, these big attitudes yeah. and they're swearing at their coaches and stuff. And it's like, dude, you just, like, can't do that. But then, like, at the same yeah. time, you want, like, hockey players to be able to do a little bit more. But I don't know. Yeah, I guess there is a fine line, too. Because once you cross too far, it's like, they'll just do whatever the fuck they want. And then it gets bad. <laughs> and, and there's guys that, like, need a little bit of structure to be, like, good at their craft. Yeah, you know? yeah. And everyone's screwing off. They're, like, lost. Yeah, I guess a uh, fine line. But, hey, it was cool seeing Kucherov ramble off some nonsense. I guess he, my brother actually played with him briefly in, in Quebec. And he said he was kind of a wild man a little bit. He looks like a bushman. He looks like that guy could go live off the grid for like three months eating berries and twigs and bark, and he'd be totally fine. But he'd find a way. Um, what, a question for you, Coop, before I, I forget. Um, you skate with Jack LaFontaine, Laffer, right? Yeah, I skate with Laffer every once in a while. You've you seen the Access 2s? Tell us a little bit about them. I, I have seen the Access 2s. They're pretty nice. We actually uh, we were joking yesterday. Our, our goalie coach had this uh, blue spray paint out and just smurfing all over his pads. It was terrible. He was so pissed. But, no, they're, uh, they look pretty nice, actually. I was kind of worried. I've chatted with him a couple times about like what I should do because I uh, – Got my new pads right when Lefave kind of the whole thing with Lefave and CCM happened, and I just did not know what to do. And uh, these ones look like the real deal. I'll tell you that they don't look like the Access Twos. Yeah, they don't look like pieces of crap. They don't look like thrown togethers. Um, he seems to like them a lot, and I might be trying them out soon. Who knows? We'll see. Really? What size are they? Might have to uh, do the boot scooting boogie, yabba dabba do all the way down to Minnesota and get a skate in there. Yeah, I don't know what size his are. That's a good question. I'd have to ask. I can get back to you on that, though. They, they look nice, though. You, you seen the gloves at all? Or no, just the pads? I'm not, I haven't really tried them on or anything, but like I see them use them, obviously. But. Okay, so you heard it here first. Confirm. Axis 2s. They're live. Jack Lafontaine Laffer. I actually, you know what? I watched that guy. Actually, I didn't watch him play. He uh, he was on the bench one night for Penticton uh, when they were in Nanaimo playing the Clippers, and uh, they had another guy in that. That guy got just burned for like three from behind the goal line. Short night. You know, I was pissed off because, so, uh, the Nanaimo Clippers in the BC, uh, their goalie that year, Landon Pavelson, great guy, uh, he got me and my woman at the time tickets to every game. He's like, listen, I'm from the States. I believe he's from the States. My parents are never in town, obviously, because, you know, States, Canada, and, and the island. Here's, here, take my tickets. You can come to every game. So, I, I'm going to all these games, and I remember seeing stuff about LaFontaine. You know, he played at, uh, you know, Michigan or whatever. Um, and I'm like, this guy's got to be, you know, he's the best goalie in the league. I'm, I'm excited to see him play. Penticton rolls in, they start the backup, and I'm like, this is, you know what? I showed up early to warm-ups because I wanted to watch this guy. The guy took, LaFontaine took three shots in the warm-ups that night in Nanaimo. And then I watched the backup play, and the guy gets burned. Like I said, three goals from behind the goal line. I'm like, like literally, Penticton out shoots him 45, like 12, and they lose 3-1 that night. Like, what is going on? I felt I felt chintz. Like, people got felt chintz when we did the podcast for 45 minutes last week. Damn it. Well, if you make your way down to Minnesota before you head out to Sweden, I can get you on the ice with the guy. So you can see him up close. You know what, actually? So I'm not going to the States. I was going to go to the States. I had to uh, reroute everything because of some airline issues. When the season's done in Sweden, I'm coming to the Florida. I'm going to the States. Unless Canada's normal again, which I don't think Canada will be. I'm going on Florida, Minneapolis. I'm, I'm going to do a whole U.S. tour. 
coming to see you too, Pat. I want to see those abs oh, again. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can you can lotion them up for me. Be nice. Yes, new <laughs> new vlog series, moving in with the Shays. <laughs> Be perfect. Okay, final topic of the day before we uh, move on and uh, cap the episode off. Coop's a little bit chapped. All right, we, we, we did a reel that I posted on my Instagram a couple weeks ago that uh, Carey Price is not a money goalie, okay? People are all up in arms. Trav, you don't know what you're talking about. Trav, you're a loser. Coop was very respectable about it. You know, he was like, Trav, I don't think you know what you're talking about. Here's my two cents. I wanted I want to leave one point before I let you go off on me here, okay? When I say Carey Price is not a money goalie, okay? If I'm a general manager, what am I paying guys for? I'm paying guys to win. Austin Matthews, not a money player. Mitch Marner, not a money player. You know who is? Tim Thomas, Jonathan Quick, Corey Crawford. You know what I mean? Crosby. Guys that have won cups. You know, guys City that have won Crosby. cups. Yes, there again. If you've won me a cup, you're a money goldie. Because guess what? You don't get paid for getting bounced in the first round. You get paid for winning the cup. And as a guy paying, if I'm cutting the checks as a GM, I want a guy to win me a cup. That's why I say Matt Murray is a money was at least was at one point a money goalie. I remember even during the run, there's there was times, although yeah, Pittsburgh was a good team, there's times where nobody was even getting a sniff on him. Like, you know, time when it would matter the most, chips were down, he'd make the big save, I remember. Obviously things have changed a little bit in Ottawa, but here, yeah, no, just shit on me, Coop. Just take a big fucking dump on my chest. You make yes. points. I, you make good points. I think that Matt Murray, yeah, at a time was a money goalie, but I think obviously that didn't hold up. Um, I would guess I would just say that I don't know if the NHL pays guys necessarily to win anymore. Like I think guys get paid for producing points or producing numbers, which I think like Price did and Price has done in the past. And being an elite player is just like a title now in the NHL that gets you money, right? Like I don't think like Austin Matthews is getting paid a crap ton of money, but they haven't won anything, you know? And I think they have to pay those guys that money to keep them around because if they didn't pay Matthews that – He's getting that same money somewhere else, but he wants to play in Toronto, right? So I don't know. It's a tough, it's a tough conversation because I also hate the the Tim Thomas is a money goaltender thing because man, Tim Thomas drives me nuts when he used to play. Like, why, why, dude? He was electric. <laughs> Tim Thomas and his beautiful band of bumblebee colored men, original six, baby. Guy primed at he hit his prime at 38 and he was fucking insane. He won that cup 20, 2011. Yeah, most women don't even peak at 38. They're, no. they're still on their way up. Tim Thomas did. Seeing that man in the locker room with kids around, like cuddled around, he's in his jock strap with his beer gut hanging out at 40 years old. That just like gave me a headache. And that his gear when he went to Florida or Dallas, I can't remember which one was the real bad one, but. When he went to either Florida or Dallas, it was just rainbow colored. I wanted to puke. He can't like, I just. You know, you know what? I got, a, I got a story for you about that, that that I did hear. Tim Thomas was legitimately with, with both the Bruins, Panthers and Stars spending $1,500 a day US for overnight shipping, getting shit fixed on his gear. Like he'd be working with Dennis at Factory Mad, get the knee block fixed, shed it back, $1,500. Uh, I don't like this strap. Move it down a half inch, $1,500. Oh, he's picky. And he'd be, he'd, he'd be racking up a huge bill, which is why. I think he's the only guy in NHL history to use every gear brand and every model from that brand during that, that era of his, of his playing days. But let me ask you this. Did you not love the body check on Alex Burroughs? You, you'd rather Bobby Lou win the cup? I, I love Timmy Thomas. When he threw that body check, you know, he makes the, you know, he goes and gives up the goal in overtime and Roberto Longo was like, yeah, you know, uh, if I was in that, I wouldn't have given that one up because uh, I played my crease. It's over. It's over. Bobby Lou, I mean. He's a good, good character too. I, I will say this, haven't talked about this. The guy was great. He, he pers- I don't know if you know this or not. So he reached out to me. Uh, like, did we talk about this, Pat, or did you know this or no? I don't, I don't know. So Roberto Luongo reached out to me on Twitter about you know five, six years ago, whatever, and really loved the montages I was doing. He'd ask, can you make a montage of me with this song, with this, with that? And I'd say, yeah, listen, you're Bobby Lou. Like, I remember the first day he messaged me, I see Strombo and one message me, and I'm like, I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta turn my laptop off, restart it. I'm like, no, Roberto Luongo did message me. And so I'm doing <laughs> these montages for him. And he says, listen, I'm gonna be in Winnipeg this year. I'll get you and your dad passes to uh, you know practice, come out to a mooring skate, and I'll give you some sticks. We'll get a picture and we'll call it a day. What do you say? I say, absolutely, done, done, done. And uh, I filmed the whole thing. Um, I feel like that got me in, or got him in a load of shit because I never mentioned I was filming anything. I just assumed I was gonna film some stuff and I put up the video. So it did like 50,000 views or whatever, but. You know, he gave me the stick. My dad and I got the picks. It was awesome. And uh, just iced me ever since. Been on, left on red since 2016. 
or 17. Uh, I remember seeing those pictures. That's a sad end of that story. Yeah. yeah I haven't heard back from him. I feel that. heartbroken. I'm, dude, I'm shot. Roberto Luongo, like, if, if Bobby Lewis Fuck. is listening, man, I will say this. I really appreciated watching him growing up. I, uh, an absolute great goaltender. You know, he wins gold, the World Juniors, yes, or uh, Olympics. Excuse me. God, having a stroke here today. Um, game seven of the cup final, you know, goal away a couple times from winning it. And it was disappointing that, you know, you have a guy that everybody says is a great guy, which he is. He goes out of his way to reach out to me on Twitter, invites me, you know, the morning skate, gives my dad a morning skate pass. We get in the building, my, literally, for the morning skate when the Panthers were in Winnipeg, my dad and I were the only two people in the building outside of the rink. It was amazing. Pick any seat in the house you want. My dad wants to go to the far end. Okay, we're going to the far end. You want to go behind the net? Okay, dad, we'll go behind the net. Like, comes off the ice. He's like, hey, guys, uh, come over here for a second. And he gives me the two sticks. We get our picture. You know, my dad talks to him for 15 minutes. And I'm thinking, like, this guy does not want to talk to my dad or me. Like, this guy's got better things to do. I remember my dad asked him. My dad says, uh, Roberto, I got a question for you. How do you do it? And he's like, what do you mean? My dad's like, everybody shits on you in the media. How do you do it? And he's like, I don't know, just a positive attitude. And I care about my day. I'm like, like what an awesome guy. Honestly, I like, like what an, what an answer to give, and it, it's unfortunate he's left me on red the last five years because yeah, I, I really do look up to him, and I, and I it was awesome getting to talk to him, and meet him, but uh, I don't know, maybe we'll post this on Instagram Reels and maybe we'll uh, we'll get a flyer on him, yeah, yeah, or sandbag him, yeah, dude, I, legit, I've sent him like the last five or six messages I've sent since 2017, red, 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 and it tells me he's seen them, he's seen them, he's seen them, no reply. <laughs> That's brutal, dude. <laughs> Maybe I'll send him a message after this. Do you, you want to come to the podcast? Yeah. Duh. But my my take on the you know money goaltender is like I don't know if you look at it literal like you know why they're paying guys in the NHL like Matthews or whatever. It's because you know yeah he hasn't won a cup, but it's because they think he can. So like they're they're paying them because they think they can help the team win a cup, like, which is why they're paying anyone. And like, yeah. So if someone puts up a lot of points, which is why they would pay someone a lot, it's because they think, Oh, this guy's going to win us the cup. So I think like that, and which is why they pay Carey price a lot of money. Cause they think he's going to win the cup. But like when it's become crunch time, he's seemed to always not, you know, pull through. Yeah, I think that's which, that's a tough conversation to have, like in the NHL, where I mean, they haven't always had the best team in Montreal in front yeah. of, him. and like he, when I think when it's come to crunch time, he's like performed the best he can. I mean, like if you look at other scenarios that he's been in, like World Juniors, gold medal, Olympics, gold medal, like he's yeah. uh, come to crunch time in other situations, he's won. I mean, you can argue Canada's had the best teams behind or in front of him, but you could also argue that Montreal has had nowhere near the team that like say Tampa had this year obviously so I, yeah. I think if you remember the 2012 cup run Jonathan Quick you had an eighth place team that made the playoffs in the last day of the season that was terrible they were averaging like one and a half goals a game throughout the season and he carried them to the playoffs he carried them through Vancouver 40 50 saves a night buried yeah. St. Louis the Yotes the Devils and the most dominant postseason run of all time yeah, eighth place team. They were playing like a first place team, but it, it started with the goaltender. So, in my opinion, and I, I love Quickie, I've, you know, which obviously I have my biases, but there should be no reason why he can't put the team on his back and win. If if he's as money a goalie as people say, I think he should be able to. I think also just the the stat alone that Montreal has broken the record now as the only team in NHL history to win a playoff series when they've paid a guy 10 million or more. No team has won a series when you pay somebody 10 million and change. Anybody on the payroll. And the fact that Toronto has four guys like that, oh my, I don't know how you're gonna win. Yeah. Wouldn't that mean that Carey Price is the most money over $10 million player of all time? Well, he's better than Bobrovsky or McDavid. Dude, I I think, well, like he did do that this year. Price and It was an amazing run. It was an he, incredible run. He was carrying his team 100%. Like, that Canadian division, everyone was kind of like, "Oh, it feels weak," or "Oh, wait, maybe it's not weak." Literally, because Carey Price was playing off, like playing unbelievable and carrying them. He he came up short, so they're like, "Oh, is he not a money goalie, or is Tampa just that good?" And he, you know, he did everything he could. I don't think he played any worse in the Cup. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like I think Tampa was the better team, and that's the, how it goes sometimes, but. I mean, it's an argument. I just, I think it's okay to have the opinion 
because like yeah he hasn't won anything so you can say like oh he's not the clutch goalie that that you want to win the cup but i mean it's easy easily to disagree with and it's easy to agree like you know what i mean like you can easily say like you're crazy for that he's nasty but i i can see the point of why you would say like oh he's not the clutch goalie he's never never won and Coop, I'll point this out as well. You're not the only person to be very disgruntled with that hot take. The amount of comments on that reel that were, look at that guy's face. You, can you believe a guy looking like that has the balls to make an opinion like that? Look at his hair. Nobody with a mullet has a respected opinion. That reel did 60,000 views on, on Instagram reels. And still every day, I probably get like 10, 15 notifications of people in the comments just shitting on me that you're a bozo, you're an ass clown. And you're probably right, you probably are. Make sure you listen to the podcast because guess what? We drop a new episode every Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern, Apple, Spotify, even on YouTube. I think Pat's still doing the YouTube thing on uh, for the podcast. But we want to thank you for listening. Thank you to our guest, Cooper Lakenda. You can find him on YouTube at Cooper Lakenda on Instagram. Same tag, all that good stuff. And uh, he's dropping videos. He's got a new video today that I'm looking forward to seeing. It'll uh, obviously be up by the time the podcast goes up on Thursday. But uh, yeah, Pat Shea as well. Pat Shea 25 on Instagram. Pat Shea on YouTube. On behalf of yours truly, thank you for listening to the podcast. To See you next week. Big risk, big balls, bitch, I run this shit. Word to yeah. the wise, I'm a G, you don't know me. I just tripled last month in this whole week. Double time.